So today we had another explosive story from the New York Post uh, exposing yet again that Hunter Biden apparently tried to trade on his father's public office. I would note that yesterday's story was really not denied by the Biden campaign. They rushed down a surrogate to say absolutely such meetings with shady Ukrainian businessmen would have never happened. And then a few hours later, after so much of the media had bought that denial hook, line, and sinker, they said, well, perhaps it's possible they had an informal pull-aside meeting, uh, which, of course, is the way these things would happen anyway. I suspect we'll see yet another non-denial denial out of the Biden campaign today. But I also want to make a broader point about the censorship of these stories, uh, irrespective of what happens on the merits. You have big tech oligarchs declaring war on Donald Trump, on the Republican Party, and conservatives across America, locking down the account of one of the most widely circulated, oldest, and most venerable newspapers in America, locking down the account of the press secretary to the president of the United States, locking down the account of the president's campaign, refusing to allow people to post the URL to that story. And then they just issue a mealy mouth apology saying that they could have communicated together. And today, yet again, Twitter locks down this story, prohibits it being circulated. That is not exactly the standard that big tech oligarchs apply to every story about Donald Trump over the last five years or to every story about Brett Kavanaugh two years ago. And for all of those tech oligarchs, who think they can get away with this, I will simply say that winter is coming. They have enjoyed total immunity under Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. That is going to change soon because the millions of Americans who believe in God and believe in national sovereignty and believe in the Constitution will not tolerate these monopolists continuing to dictate the flow of information in this country. That's what is at stake in this election, and all of the oligarchs in Silicon Valley can censor our voices as much as they want, but our voices will be louder on November 3rd. Today, the Post follows Hunter's international drifting to China, where he, is, where he has squeezed the communists for millions of dollars. In the midst of this story, there are serious questions raised about where Joe Joe Biden fits into all of it. According to today's story, one of Hunter's massive Chinese business deals contemplates Hunter holding an equity share of, quote, 10 for, quote, the big guy. So we, what we want to know today is Joe Biden, the big guy? In a flow chart of business structure, someone is identified as, quote, chairman. Is Joe Biden the chairman? When there's, when there's discussion of Hunter facilitating, quote, introductions for $10 million, who is he expected to, to introduce to whom? Are they talking about Joe Biden? The Post also reports something we already knew, that Hunter had a $100,000 line of credit card on a credit card that he used to fuel an extravagant shopping spree which included airline tickets and multiple items at Apple, Apple stores, pharmacies, hotels, and restaurants. This spree was enjoyed by Hunter, Joe Biden's brother, James, and James' wife, Sarah. What did Joe Biden know about this? Look, that, that Joe Biden would be cozy with the communist Chinese should surprise nobody. It doesn't surprise me because he has a, a decade-long record of being soft on China. Biden was a champion of most favored nation status for China, supported their entry into the WTO. China's entry into WTO cost a loss of 60,000 American factories and three and a half million American jobs, many in my own district. Biden opposed, opposed President Trump's strong trade actions against China for their long history of ripping off America. And he has said that he would drop tariffs against Chinese products without expecting anything in return. President Trump is the first president in my lifetime to be tough on China. He's rightly stood up to China like no president before him. 